So, okay, I'm going to be using a set of slides. Way to get started with Firefly is using its um, command line interface. Uh, one can spin up a local development environment in seconds and immediately start building an application against it. We'll cover the command line interface in detail during the workshop. Uh, what I wanted to cover in this first part is how the architecture looks like when running Firefly locally. That way, when we use the command line interface, we know exactly what's taking place under the covers. In this example, we we'll use two members. Uh, on the left, we have member zero, and on the right, we have member one. Now, since we're going to be doing local development, we're going to have a member, both members, running side by side on the same laptop. That way, we can build and test complete end-to-end -end flows. Each member will have its own Firefly core running. And also, each of these Firefly cores will have its own database. The blockchain component is used to run transactions on the blockchain and also to listen to events from the blockchain. So what we have in between the two is the actual blockchain. Then we have another component that is called public storage. So this is used to share public data in between the members. Now, a quick clarification when I say public, it's always within the domain of these members. Now, the public storage uses peer-to-peer -peer communication. So that means that these components can talk directly to each other from one member to another. A data exchange component is used to send and receive private data in between the members. Just like with public storage, it uses peer-to-peer -peer communications, which means that they can talk to each other across members. Finally, we have the client application. This is where the development will be focused on. Note that Firefly will orchestrate all of the on-chain and off-chain logic and storage. The application simply has to be written against a very simple RESTful API by the Firefly. When running Firefly locally, the command line interface will spin up a number of Docker containers. These containers will have each of these items that we just listed now. Specifically, for the case of the blockchain, what we're going to get is a Truffle Ganache. For the blockchain interface, we are going to have IfConnect. All of these projects are available uh, in the repositories for more information. Now, for the public storage, we use the Interplanetary File System, or IPFS. And Mutual TLS data communications is used for the private uh, data exchange. Finally, Postgres is used for the database. OK, so that was a very quick summary of how the architecture looks like when running Firefly locally using the CLI. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the rest of the examples. Pass it back to you, Nick. Cool. Thanks, Gabriel. Um, is it possible for me to share my screen? Great. Okay, so great to great to meet everybody. Um, I, I hope everyone can see my screen. Okay, please tell me if it's doing anything funny. Um, my my name is Nick. I'm, okay, super. Thanks, Sophia. Um, yeah, my name is Nick Gasky. Um, I was involved very heavily with the Hyperledger Fabric project many years ago, and uh, really excited to you know work with the broader community. Um, on all things Firefly. So I'll, I'll be one of your main points of contact, um, you know, in, in weekly or bi-weekly dev meetings in Rocket Chat and, you know, separate one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings. So um, we, we really welcome everyone to the community and, you know, really excited to have everyone get their hands on this really exciting technology. So this, this is the hands-on workshop. We're gonna, you know, actually install this stuff on our machines. We're gonna run some code. We're gonna look at those core interfaces that Gabriel just talked about, um, our Ethereum shim, the public storage, IPFS, the TLS secured private data exchanges, the Firefly core, and, and all of this functionality that's, you know, encapsulated and abstracted behind a, a really simple REST API. Um, we'll show you some some running user interfaces and applications, and you'll get a sense of you know how easy this is to use and how extensible and how powerful it is. 
Um, so the, the first thing I want to draw your attention to, uh, and I, I posted this in the chat, but um, I'm, I'm going to post it one more time just, just so that everybody has this, um, is, is this getting started on Firefly cheat sheet that we have right here. So I'm going to go back to the chat and just make sure everyone has this link. Um, so again, I'd, I'd like everyone to please visit this and, and start taking a look at you know, all of the different dependencies that we need. Um, as, as Gabriel mentioned, the, the first thing, kind of the, the beating heart that's going to make your life easy uh, using Firefly and you know interacting with with these different interfaces uh, is is the command line interface. Uh, it's a powerful powerful stack of functionality, um, and it just takes you know a couple commands to stand up a full Firefly stack, um, and then to actually you know start start exercising some of the available methods and commands inside of Firefly. So this is the first thing that we're going to need everyone to do uh, is, is actually follow along with, with this section right here, the, the references and dependencies and the overall Firefly CLI section. So two you know, um, non-negotiable dependencies that, that you have to have in order to get this uh, CLI uh, cooking on your machine. Uh, the first is, is Go. Um, it, it will work with older versions of Go, but we do highly recommend kind of the, you know, the, the more cutting edge um, uh, LTS version, version of Go 16.5. Uh, the other thing that you need, which I would have to imagine 99% you know, of folks have is, is Docker, and all of you probably have Go as well. Um, so I'm going to sort of drag my feet for, for a couple of minutes and you know, let, let any folks that don't have this installed go ahead and sort of start doing that in the background. And I'll, I'll also mention, you know, as, as we're doing this, this is meant to be um, as interactive as possible. So, you know, oftentimes, you know, things go wrong. We're trying to, you know, compile and build stuff locally. Uh, there may be, you know, just ambiguity in your own point of view. So uh, this is the greatest session for you to, you know, raise your hand, speak out loud, throw any questions in the chat. If you're completely lost and completely broken, or, you know, you really would rather have a business conversation or something, let us know in the chat. We have a lot of folks here inside of the room and that are, you know, hands on deck, um, you know, with Kaleido and with Firefly. And we're more than happy to talk to you in sort of one-off or private settings or to answer your questions inside of the chat. Um, so just want everyone to feel as, as comfortable as possible. There are no such things as bad questions and nascent open source projects uh, or in technology in general. So don't be shy. We're friendly. We're here to help. Um, and, and we really would love to get to know everyone and, and interact with you as well. Um, so um, as, as you've, you know, sort of gotten Go and gotten Docker, you know, which again, I imagine everyone has, you're going to either, you know, call one of these uh, Go commands on your machine, uh, go grab the latest CLI, or, you know, if, if you don't want to update your Go, you can go grab um, one of the tagged images, one of the pre-images right there. Okay, so I'm going to start showing you guys how this is going to work sort of um, in, in real time, the things that you're going to be able to do. Uh, the first thing we'll do is, is we'll actually check, right? We're, we're going we're gonna to check and make sure that, that we have Firefly installed. Um, this, this command right here, the go install or the go get, this should have only taken about a minute on your machine right there. So I'm, I'm assuming that you know, all the folks that had Go and all the folks that had Docker um, have already you know, go, gone ahead and you know, issued this command. Uh, and hopefully you, know, you have an executable you know, FF command that's available on your machine. Um, if you have that, you're going to see something like this. Okay, so this is going to show you the available commands and, and the available flags right here. What, what we really care about is, is just kind of three core commands in, inside of Firefly. We, we care about this init, which is going to be kind of a high-level wrapper about the configuration of our stack. Uh, namely, we're going to give it a name and we're going to give it um, the number of members that we want inside of our Firefly ecosystem. Uh, we're going to do this with three because, you know, obviously if we're just using two members and we're doing these, you know, bilateral transactions with two members, you know, you could argue that they're private, but they're not private from anyone else inside of the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand up a Firefly stack with three members 
Um, we'll look at broadcast transactions where everyone gets the data, and then we'll look at some of those private transactions, right, where we're, instead of using IPFS, we're using that, you know, um, T TLS sort of peer-to-peer -peer protocol right there to, you know, directly send messages to individually enumerated participants. So, so init is essentially just, just the config of, of your stack right there. Start is, is kind of the more exciting command. This is going to bring down all of those core Docker images onto your machine. This will give you the Ethereum adapter. This will give you the Firefly core. This will give you that Ganache CLI for, you know, local, lightweight, super fast blockchain development. Uh, and it'll also start up those corresponding containers as well and provide you with some local host endpoints where you can see, you know, a user interface for convenient interaction and inspection, uh, as well as um, an embedded Swagger API. So you can sort of, you know, take a step backwards and get closer to how you're really going to interact with Firefly, which of course is programmatically. Uh, and then the last one that we see here is, is stop. So this will just stop the containers. Uh, and if you want to start from scratch, you can use Firefly remove. Uh, so, so those are, those are kind of going to be your babies right here for, for step one that, you know, you'll get, you'll get very familiar with uh, in the shorthand. So I'm going to pause there. I'm just going to check the chat intermittently and, and make sure there's, you know, not, not too many questions going on here. I see Nico's doing a great job uh, helping folks with, um, you know, sort of if, if you're running on Windows or you need to stand up a VM or you're running on Linux. So uh, thanks for that, Nico. And then, you know, you, you have Peter and Andrew and all of our subject matter expertise. Expert, expertise. Um, so it looks like chat is, is the greatest way to put your questions in. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and stand some of this stuff up. So feel free to participate alongside with me or, um, you know, this is a recorded demo, so you can just follow along, you can watch this, and then you can use the recording, you know, as a guiding artifact if you want to do this after the fact. Okay, so let me give myself a little more space and I'm going to go ahead and create a stack called data transfer. So... Now it's going to ask me for the number of members. Um, of course, you can choose two members if you just want to get started and you just want to see the core flows. I'm going to go ahead and choose three. Nick, so again, yeah. Could you zoom your command line windows? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry about that. Thanks, Nick. How, are we getting closer? Is that a little better? Yeah, that certainly looks better to me, hopefully for, for Anna as well. Super. OK, yeah. I'm. Uh, Apologies to folks. If this is still small, throw it in the chat and uh, Peter or someone will yell at me and we'll make it even bigger. Okay, so I'm again, this is just the wrapper for, for my Firefly stack. This is the config. I gave it a name of data transfer and we're gonna do three members right here. So cool, we're happy. We can see the, the compose file right there telling me where it is. And now it's telling me that if I wanna start this stack, I just say FF start data transfer. So again, I'm gonna steal some more room. I'm going to say FF start data transfer. Now, remember, this, this is going to take some time. This is going to go ahead and download those Docker images. This is going to stand up your local Ganache interface. This is going to instantiate a smart contract. It's going to do a lot of things, but what it's doing is it's giving you that core component architecture. It's giving you all the goodies that are inside of a Firefly stack and inside of a Firefly node. So. Um, we'll be able to see, you know, approximately how long this takes on my machine. Uh, if I have to give you my best educated guess, I'd say about a minute right here. Um, but this CLI, which was written by Nico, who's on the chat, um, it's, it's very interactive, it's very informative, and it's going to let you know sort of what's happening as these containers come to life, as, you know, a smart contract is instantiated, for example, as new organizations and new members are onboarded into the system. Um, you'll, you'll get all of those notifications. So, you know, at the moment, it's just pulling the Docker images for me. But now we can start seeing some, some more interesting information uh, manifesting inside of the terminal. And again, I'll, I'll reiterate it probably 10 or 20 times, but, um, you know, just please, 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 please don't hesitate to, you know, throw any questions inside of this chat. Um, you can feel free to use our rocket chat. Um, we're just at Firefly-Labs on rocket chat. Um, we're doing a better job of a t as a team of, of getting, you know, very interactive on that and putting all of the discourse about the Firefly project, about any errors that we see internally, any developmental progress, uh, all of that's going to reside, you know, 
fully transparently um, inside of the rocket chat, uh, inside of Firefly Labs. So, uh, love for you know anyone and everyone to to please join that and you know interact with us through that medium. Um, it's it's a it's a little bit of a blast blast from the past for me. I, I spent a ton of time on there um, using. Um, um, interacting with with sort of the the fabric folks, so um, oh maybe I need to close one of my terminals. No, okay. Let's go ahead and try this again. FF start data transfer. So what we should see if if this comes up properly is it, it should expose us you know all of the local host endpoints where where we can get to that user interface. Um, and and again you know this. We, we would love for this to be perfect. This is a live demo. I'm, I'm shameless about doing live demos. And, you know, as every developer knows, you know, there it probably makes you better to see an error or two as, as you're doing a live demo. So, um, you know, th this maybe not go 100%, but, you know, we, we will do this in real time with you. And this will be sort of a sort of a, a symbiotic relationship as, as we're looking at, you know, all of the different permutations and all of the different edge cases that could occur. So um, we, we see, you know, a little bit of um, <laughs> sort of a, Possibility for an error. Um, if if you if you do see that as as you're starting up a stack, you can always just do ff stop. You know stack name ff start, or you can take the approach that I just did. Just just say ff start again with your stack name. Um, if you have those images, if you have those containers, and you know all of them are running, you're going to get success. Uh, it may be the case that perhaps you know maybe one container started and it exited, right? And that's not going to serve you know all of these endpoints. FYI, I think Nick, as you hit, the, I, I think you actually hit an issue which was um, fixed a retry loop that got popped in this morning. So hopefully the latest release won't won't hit that issue. Um, just for, for background to, to chat while people are, um, are all typing on their their machines here. Um, what's sort of happening under the covers here is we've we've embedded um, Docker Compose inside of a command line. Um, and then um, in the CLI, um, Nico led the development of, um, of this, who's here with me in the room. The, um, the, the CLI does a whole bunch of orchestration on top of that. For example, um, you're going to have addresses that need to be generated. So it generates addresses and it injects those into the configurations. When you, when you do Firefly in it, it lays out a file site system inside of a dot farfi directory in, in your home directory and underneath that you'll find all the configuration files the, the yaml for the core the yaml for the data exchange the the the, the key files and stuff generated for um for for ganache etc all of those inside of there and then um it starts everything up um and you can imagine there's a like there's a sequence here it's like a launch sequence you've got the database has to come up um and be be there um and the the blockchain has to come up and be there and the smart contract that's um that's backing the private data exchange a very simple example but kind of like that foundational piece that needs to be um to be installed um so that all happened and on next environment and it all stood back up again and then it has to restart the um, uh, the the, the Firefly runtimes so that they'll register their event streams using ETH Connect that will then sh listen. Um, all this happens under the covers to uh, reliably for for events. And then the final stage is the network map. The um, each of those nodes has come up. It hasn't really joined the network yet. It actually needs to um, advertise itself to the rest of the network. And actually, the area you saw on the screen. Was that the CLI was trying to do that while one of the one of the fireflies was still coming up, and it and it got a oh this firefly isn't actually running when you're trying to do it, so you shouldn't see that because it will get retried under the covers. But that's the sequence of steps that's happening under the covers as part of the CLI, and it was really I don't know really important for us when we were thinking about this to try and um, you know it's a journey, but try and make it so that. Um, you don't have to understand every single one of the components inside out to be able to get up and running. And lots of developers can just focus on the sort of the externals of Firefly, which is the internals of their application, right? The development of their, their full stack 
that stack out. So anyway, sorry, Nick, for the diversion now. I oh, no, no, no problem. And I'm going to actually restart it so that we can ensure that all three members are, are successfully joined to the network in the member map. So what, what we want to see inside of the UI is we actually want to see three network members inside of here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and restart this stack right here, and hopefully we'll get a, we'll get a, a happy, happy result. Oh, I said stop. You want to say FF start? Um, yeah, you may need to remove it. I'm not sure if it'll, uh, or you can manually register the order. Yeah. I think just FF um, remove it. Or, or as um, as Andrew said, you could just go to the, uh, if you just go to the, the swagger, let's let's do this next. Let's keep everyone yeah. entertained with a little bit of a dance here. So if you go to 5001 slash API, then this is the, Oh, if I found, oh, you've just stopped it. Oh, I, I stopped it. Okay, <laughs> we'll start it back up again. Let's go ahead and start it. And this is good. This is the sort of you know the 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 the, the, the command lines there to give you an environment that you can you can kick the tires with. So this is nice to like do a little bit of tire kicking live. So um, the um, unless I mean I'll, I'll probably waffle on a little bit about the API um, while. Yeah, While so we're looking at it because um, the, what you'll see on the API is there's um, a lot more gets than posts. There's a lot more um, uh, things you can look at, the, the sort of paddling feet of the swan. You can see every single one of those. Um, but actually, as a developer, you don't need to use, you don't need to actually perform all of those. But the UI is able to show you transactions, events, data, operations, all of the all of the model. So if you've got 5001 API up, Nick, if you scroll down to network, the slash network um, prefix down in namespaces at the moment, then we go to network right at the bottom there. So, so you've got um, uh, underneath network, there are nodes and there are organizations. Um, and you're running a node. Um, and and um, nodes are owned by organizations, which is just a fundamental identity in the system. So in order to kind of exist to everybody else, you have to advertise yourself to everybody else. Well, what's an advertisement? Well, it's just a broadcast. So the, the, the system eats its own. Um, uh, eats its own dog food here and uses the broadcast mechanism in order to distribute the the, um, the the information to everybody. So if you click on, we're on, on the second node that failed, if you click on um, register slash node slash organization, the, the post, Nick, and you click try it on there, and you click send, what this is is a convenience to say, look, you know who you are, just broadcast yourself to the network. And that payload there, that's a message. It's the same payload that you get back if you were to send a message that was like an application level message. But in this case, it's a message that's um, gone out on the Firefly system um, namespace. Namespaces, um, we, we, we thought it was really important to think about multi-tenancy from day, day zero because most of these business networks are thinking about like an app store of lots of different applications. So being able to have lots of different applications on the system from day one was important. It's a Firefly system namespace. So this particular message um, is a broadcast message that happened on the Firefly system message to say, um, system namespace to say, hey, look, there's an organization. And, um, and then if you go to a query on organizations, you can do the get there, Nick, on slash network slash organizations, just do try it, do send. Scroll past all of the filtering options that you'd expect on a nice REST API, then we should see um, that. Um, oh, there we go. There must have been something else that's that's the, um, not my new organization. But this is the um, this is this is where you'd see an organization that's propagated through the network. So if you look on your environments where the CLI ran all the way through to completion, it looks like it may not have um, have configured some of the the connectivity here. The, um, the, um, you should see an organization for each member. And if you were to click into the UI and change the namespace in the top right-hand column to Firefly System, and then click on messages and click on the timeline, you'd see the publishing of all of those, um, all of those, those organizations um, uh, going through the system as broadcast, just like anything, um, everything, anything else would be.
All right, I'm going to start over one more time. We tried. I tried this before we got in the workshop, so I know it works. So I'm just going to start from scratch. I imagine there's other people out there still trying to perform a download. Um, if, if I fail in this session, we'll, we'll just turn it over to, to Andrew or Nico for, for the last 20 minutes. But um, again, we've, we've seen this we've seen this working successfully and maybe that I, I fat fingered something or, or you know, had a had a you know predated image or or release so we'll, we'll try this one more time on my machine um, if i have bad luck today uh, we'll just use one of the other um, kaleido and firefly engineers to to take you guys sort of to the finish line here so i'll go ahead and remove that stack yes i do want to remove it and we'll go ahead and start from scratch where everyone else likely is so let's say ff init um, we'll call it init test this time for good luck so, and we'll say three for the number of members. This is also a shorthand you can do rather than, you know, using the interactive um, terminal right there. So, and then we'll say FF start. Yep. I wonder, do you, do you, do you want me just to um, maybe do a little bit of a tour of my, my UI, some of the stuff I was talking about earlier? Yeah. Are you, are yeah. you rerunning that? Yeah, that sounds awesome, Peter. Cool. Let me um, share my screen here. So this was one where I just ran it was a two-member environment, but I ran just immediately before we started this morning, um, uh, and I've got the I've got the little sample running. But what I was talking about there is, if, if in the top right-hand corner here, um, you, you change from the default namespace, and you can create namespaces yourself as um, as well, and you just change to the Firefly system namespace. And um, this is my favorite view in the UI um, here. This is um, a view of messages in a, in a timeline. And um, the thing on the left, this is your organization. This is stuff that you've published to the network um, with the organization of the node that you're, that you're in. And then this is stuff, um, in, in, this is all in, in um, uh, reverse timeline order that knew us at the top, that's come in from other people in the network. So I'm there as um, or port 5000, that's as node, the first node, I can see that I broadcast a definition um, of a, um, an organization to the, to the network. Um, it had a blockchain identity, um, it gets allocated a UUID within the Firefly system, and um, it has a short name, which um, is required to be unique. Well, There's a few, few cases where we found it really is important for these networks to do some things and choose to have some things and having just a unique name for orgs is something that's been really, really popular in the um, in the networks that we've seen evolving. So you, you have a short name, but, but really what matters is the identity um, of that organization. And then you've got a node that gets defined. And this is interesting, right? Because the node is, um, uh, it's, it's not an identity in its own right. So it has an owner, which is owned by that identity. Um, and it has an ID um, as well. Um, but the reason why the node needs to be broadcast to everybody um, uh, in addition to the, the organization is because, of course, we're not just communicating via the blockchain. So there's this DX section. Now, the DX section is an example of pluggability in the system. This is really important. So you're using a implementation of a data exchange, which is mutual TLS, with HTTPS. And that implementation, through its plugin, has specified um, when, this is the API where you can ask me who I am and get data from me that you can broadcast to everyone else in the network so that they can connect to me. So um, on this node one, when the Firefly core asked um, the data exchange, the, um, the, 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 the mutual TLS data exchange came back and said, based on the certificates, I've looked inside of them, the organization name inside of my certificate is member zero. My certificates, because we're just using a completely peer-to-peer -peer, um, system here, there's actually lots of options inside of the, the, the mutual TLS data exchange, but at the moment we're just using deliberately self-signed because it's a great map for the way you know, a decentralized network would be managed with identity, um, that you advertise and say, look, here's me, here's, here's, here's me, this is my certificate. And, um, and here's the off-chain endpoint that you can use to talk to me. And you can obviously broadcast a different endpoint in your configuration to, the, to your own IP address. So this can be a, you know, a, a NAT resolvable host name, all the, all, the, all the stuff you'd expect. 
Um, and um, uh, and this gives this little piece of data, Firefly Core knows nothing about this schema. So like if you if you wanted to build the MQP one, like this could be a whole bunch of MQP endpoints um, uh, addresses. Th this is completely pluggable, what this broadcast information is. But the way that the broadcast works is really important because this is being broadcast to the system via IPFS. And it's being broadcast with the blockchain signature identity of the owner. I know this is really like simple, straightforward stuff for, 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 for blockchain, but w w this is an example of the coordination that anybody using a system ne needs to understand that like you've got this great system to propagate things with signed or authorization and um, signed, signed, um, signed identity um, that you attest to this data. So in this case, node one attested to node two that um that 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 data was was valid and firefly has all the plumbing to check the hashes of the payload check check everything matches up with the signatures that are on chain etc all of that stuff is um is is you know baked, baked into the firefly um uh, core stack um, um but with the pluggability that actually that blockchain can be any blockchain you like the mapping and this is a really important one the mapping between an on-chain identity and something like a did that's a pluggable interface the only plugin implementation of that one right now is there the same so the identity that you see in the message is the blockchain um ethereum um address in this particular case um, but that's a you know that's a really important thing in these enterprise systems of how do I know that a signature on chain maps to a real identity off chain because identity is not a like a, 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 a identity is not an address identity is is a you know something bigger like me as as an identity is different to my name Peter right that's that's a very very different thing so that sort of mapping is 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 a key part of this and then if I go to um, to 5001 here, yeah, I'll go to 5001 and I look at the same timeline view, um, I can see, and I switch from the private while I was doing um, private messaging, um, I can see the, um, uh, I can see the, the events um, as they, um, they came in on, on, um, on, on, on this note with the, with the difference of, of which ones were private and which ones were, were public. Um, and I can see that same, that same data um, that's, um, that's, um, that's, that's described, um, that was published by the other endpoint. Now, I do want to just talk really briefly. Some of you might have noticed something, which I'll talk to Alex about offline. Um, the order was different on this pane and the other pane. Now, how could that have been? Um, that's because the UI at the moment is using just the list of messages to display this, so they're not in the blockchain ordering. On the API, they, um, the thing that actually matters is that you have a list of, um, of events. And the events get propagated to your application through a, um, through a, um, uh, through a, um, a WebSocket interface, but there's more plugins coming for that. And the sequence of those events is what matters not the sequence that things sort of exist inside of the database. So that's the reason why you saw that. It wasn't that the system didn't manage to do the ordering, but it's like a core construct of the, of the system. It's just simply that the, the order that the UI is displaying them is not the deterministic order that they're delivered to your applications. Um, uh, I, I'll pause there in case there were some questions. I wanted to go back to Nick. Super, thanks. Thanks, Peter, for, for bridging that gap. And um, of, of course, as soon as I stopped sharing my screen, everything worked uh, perfectly. So <laughs> Guaranteed. That's, that's, that's how it works. Um, but in, in any event, um, you know, it's, it's you know, if, if you do see, you know, little, little periods of, you know, the, the failure for all of the orgs to register, you know, take down, take down the stack, you know, restart the stack and, and you'll be good right there. So I've, I've successfully restarted it. Um, all of my orgs have joined. And now what we want to look at is we want to look at some of the accompanying program, um, specifically sort of a, you know, it's kind of a, a turnkey, just one click CLI program that'll do a public broadcast to everyone. 
uh, and then a very nice, um, powerful React-based user interface, which will let you experiment with private messaging, right? If you have more than two members inside of the system, uh, you can enumerate which members you want to send those messages to. So just, just for posterity, let's um, go and make sure that all of these are looking as they should. So we originally were seeing one network member because you know it, it failed to broadcast and failed to do that registry. But now across my three members, we see that there's, you know, everyone has that that peer-to-peer -peer communication and uh, I even sent a test transaction in in the background. So what we're going to do now is we're going to transition, assuming that the CLI is built for uh, hopefully the majority of the audience that's you know interactively following along. Um, we want to transition into the Firefly samples repo right here, um, and it, and it has two folders. Um, it's it's very very straightforward, very clean and lightweight, but also very powerful. Um, it has the private data transfer CLI, which, like I said, this is just going to do a broadcast. Uh, and then it has the private data transfer UI, which will allow you inside of a GUI to actually, you know, pick the organizations, pick the members that you want to, you know, privately send, um, you know, sensitive or, you know, concealed data to inside of the system. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just do the CLI and we'll send a, a basic hello world message. Uh, and when we're while we're doing that, um, I'll, I'll show you one interesting thing. We can we can actually look at you know some of the lower level logs. We can see the true existence of these Ethereum transactions hitting our ganache, and you know we can see some of those JSON RPC methods that everyone's familiar with, and we'll be able to see you know um, transaction hashes and timestamps and all that good stuff from Ethereum transactions. So if we look at our running Docker containers, um, what we'll notice is that we have an ETH Connect container for um, every member has their own unique ETH Connect container. So when I kick off this, um, you know, this this end-to-end -end CLI program, it's it's going to be org number one, member A, this container right here, the first organization inside of my stack, they're going to be broadcasting that mess that message. So um, we'll be interesting to sort of, you know, see the logs for this container right here, um, see the broadcast of that transaction, and then see the subsequent, you know, um, commit of that transaction into their, you know, ganache ledger. So I'll go ahead and copy this container right here. We can open up the logs and then over here on the right side, uh, we'll just kick off this program. And and these are, you know, very, very lightweight, very, again, lightweight. I don't mean that, to, you know, sort of um, in, in a negative connotation. Um, they're just very simple. You do a quick NPM install and then the programs will run. So it makes your life really easy. So we'll take a look at the logs for this container right here. And then we'll go ahead and start sending some transactions into the network. So here's the logs, uh, nothing overly exciting right now. When we start to kick off this program right here, I'm just gonna do an NPM run start from the root of this private data transfer CLI folder. And we'll see the broadcast of, you know, a hello world message inside of the system. And we start seeing, you know, all of those familiar Ethereum things, right? We start seeing, you know, the, the you know, the, the JSON RPC calls, right? Estimating gas, sending the transaction. We see the acknowledgement of the other nodes inside of the system that they've received this message um, and and we can now you know very closely correlate you know all of these things that have been abstracted you know to our trust anchor to our ledger that's kind of sitting in the beating heart as a connector inside of the firefly core right there um, so just wanted to point that out for for folks to to see so that's that's just kind of the out of the box you know click npm start and boom it's going to send some transactions into your network you can go into your user interface and you can see those transactions you can do what peter did right there you know you can click on you know sort of the messages you can open up the broadcast we can see the strings that came through because this was public it was available for node number two right here we can see the data hash um, essentially and any any piece of metadata or any piece of detail that that makes sense for your business process this is going to be exposed uh, if you're privy to that transaction. Um, so we see that one come in. 
now let's go a step further. Now, now let's open up this, this user interface and start talking about privacy a little bit. So similar to, you know, building that, that CLI folder right there, all we need to build the UI folder in fabric samples right here. Um, again, you go into here, you're going to clone this repository, you're going to CD into this folder and you're going to do an NPM install. Uh, once you've done that, you just do an NPM start and it's going to expose a, a wonderful user interface for you uh, hosted on uh, port 3000 on your machine. So I'll go ahead and stand this up for the UI component now. So let me go back a directory and then we'll go into the UI component right here. So similarly, npm run start and um, fingers crossed since I'm doing a live demo, but this should uh, ultimately serve on uh, my local host 3000. And uh, what, we'll, what we'll notice um, as, as this manifests on the page right here is I, I have a toggle. I can switch context now. So I can act as org zero or member A inside of this system. Feel free to use your own nomenclature. But what we have is three members, each of whom has that application that we looked at over here, 5,000, 5,001, 5,002. And we can toggle context right here so that we can you know, do invocations to, to the blockchain, right? We can do message broadcast to the system, we can do private messages inside of the system. So let's just look at you know a broadcast where everyone's going to get this message, right? Um, welcome to the Firefly workshop, right? We'll go ahead and broadcast this into the system, and this is going to go out to everyone, right? We're going to see that it was sent from myself. If we go and toggle the different components right here, or the different members, we're going to see that they received it. They received it from my address right there. This guy's going to have the exact same string. Um, and this is, you know, a very, very easy public message. And I even see that I sent this to the rest of the network. Let's drill down another layer now and, and talk about what's really important, though, and, and that's privacy in the scope of, of this broader ecosystem. So rather than broadcasting to the whole network, uh, and again, there are clean APIs that will make your life do this, a common, simple REST API that, you know, is not reliant on a user interface. This is emblematic and represent representative of how easy it is to program against the Firefly APIs and, and build out a nice, powerful UI like this that, that Andrew and team, uh, you know, worked on really, really quickly too. I, I shouldn't, you know, sort of um, toss that aside. The, the development on, on Firefly, um, you know, is, is really accelerated. There's, there's easy interfaces, easy REST APIs, and easy components to wrap your head around. So rather than broadcast to the whole network, I'm just going to go ahead and choose, you know, a single recipient. So I'm grayed out right here because I'm the sender. I don't want to send anything to myself. I already know that information. But maybe let's send it to org number one and, and their address right here. Okay. Really private data. Okay. We'll do that. We can go and submit this to the system. We get that immediate asynchronous response, right? That the message has been sent, that it's it's into the system. And, and we see that we, we have this right here, right? We can see that it was, it was submitted. So let's go ahead and now switch to org number two right here. And we see that they've received that message, right? They have, they have line of sight into this really private data. We could go into their user interface over here and we see that as well, that it was a private transaction, um, but, it, but it is available for this organization, right? They were privy to this. Just like, you know, you can, you can make this analogous to, um, you know, something in using Tessera inside of, inside of Ethereum, right? Using that private for parameter and just enumerating the, the public Tessera address of who you want to get that private transaction and who's going to be able to execute it or make sense of it in the system. Um, and if we go back here, um, it should go without saying that if we go to org number three, member C, who I did not make privy to this transaction, they don't have any line of sight into the inputs, right? They're, they're not going to be able to make sense of, of that private payload. Um, they're just going to be able to see that, you know, maybe something came out into the system. Um, so, so that's that's the UI and the CLI that you get out of the box in the Fabric Samples um, repository. As you stand up your Firefly CLI, um, you get these wonderful, you know, user interface dashboards. Um, you know that that Peter did a much nicer job than I'm doing um, walking you through. Um, but this is your core navigation over here on the left. This is going to, you know, give you all of that macro or granular information that you need. You can toggle between list and timeline right here. Um, you can go, you know, over the course of a week or over the course of a month, and you can change the namespace to the system um, or to default as well. Um, 
One, one final thing that, that I'll point out here as well, and, and I'll, I'll save five or 10 minutes for um, our engineers to you know, maybe, maybe take some, some, other, some other questions or, or show pieces that I've forgotten to, to show. But if you just remove the UI and you do slash API, um, which we did show earlier, I just want everyone to you know, just know at your core that this is there and ultimately you're gonna want the APIs obviously. Uh, this, this will give you the interactive swagger interface and this will get you again, you know, much closer to how you're you're going to program, you know, ultimately your server side app and do your integrations with your core back office systems as well. So slash UI slash API, these are both served after you um, successfully stand up a stack once you do a, an init and a start using the, the FF CLI. Um, and again, you do a Docker PS, you can see all those containers. If you're into, you know, the actual blockchain transactions, we recommend that you look at one of the, the blockchain connector containers, such as ETH Connect for Ethereum. Okay, 10 minutes left. Um, I'll, I'll pause for a second and just ask a question to, to Peter and folks. There's, there's another repository that we have. Um, it's the it's the data exchange one built with Visual Studio and um, also also has a, sort of a, a nice flow and, and some exposed API. So I wonder if it's worth going through that or if we want to focus a bit more on any of these pieces uh, inside of the CLI. Yeah, I think that was TypeScript, you man. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Nico had a thought. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add a comment. I know there have been a lot of people that have been trying to get this running in the background here and uh, running into a whole variety of issues. Um, there's just like 40 people on this call, which is probably uh, 10x the number of people that have tried running the CLI before today. <laughs> this is bleeding edge. And so we just appreciate you bearing with us as uh, we are launching Firefly. Uh, we're really excited to for this to be collaborative. So if you are running into issues, we definitely want to help out. Um, I, I will drop a, a link to our rocket chat in the chat. If you want to join and, and chat directly with us, we would love to help uh, you get around these things. And, and also thank you for reporting stuff that you're finding. Um, there's, the, the, as you saw from Gabriel's diagram, there are a lot of moving parts to this system. And so there's, there's just a, a lot of things that uh, may be unpredictable in, in different developers setups. We want this to be super easy uh, for a developer to get started really quickly and uh, to just be able to focus on building their app and their business logic. So um, excited to work with everybody here to, uh, to help make that happen. Oh, thanks, there's the camera. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll, I'll drop a link to, to Rocket Chat and um, feel free to open GitHub issues if you're running into trouble and we would love to, to help you guys out. Thank you. And, and on your suggestion, um, I will pull up the, um, the homepage of the MTLS data exchange, and then um, Gabriel maybe could talk a bit about that. Yeah, and, and this one, as, as you're pulling it up, I'll just speak to it since I've used it a few times. This one's um, uberly convenient. Um, G Gabriel has abstracted uh, a lot of the heavy lifting for you, and it'll automatically generate um, a couple nested folders and some PKI artifacts that you need for authentication. Uh, and then it gives you, you know, a, a unique swagger interface for each of the members. So highly encourage everyone to, to use this. It works swimmingly with um, Visual Studio right out of the box. So uh, over to you, Gabriel, for sort of the more deeper explanation. Sure. So when we store private data in one of the Firefly instances, it actually goes into the database of that Firefly core. And if we then want to send that private information to another member, we need to be sure that we do it through a channel that is end-to-end -end encrypted. And this is where Firefly uses the mutual TLS data exchange. So basically, it relies on this component through a plain interface, and it basically delegates the responsibility of sending that message across securely to the other member. So for this to work, the CLI, what it did when everything was being provisioned is that it generated a number of certificates. This is private keys and public certificates. And so it uses those in each of the members so that the members can basically identify themselves and each other. 
So when data is being sent from one member to another, we use those certificates and those keys to encrypt the information and make sure that it securely makes it to the other side. And then we can know for a fact who that information is coming from. And then the Firefly core will process that information, add it to the internal database, and then continue with the coordination of the other events. Is there anything you wanted to add, Peter? No, that was a great, great explanation, uh, Gabriel. So, I guess we're at a few minutes um, to here. Um, were there any any questions that have come up on the chat that we wanted to surface and, and talk about a little bit? Uh, I think thus far, the chat's mostly been around troubleshooting. Uh, we acknowledge we need to do more testing on Windows. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, there's, I think a couple of things for us to look at as, uh, as a takeaway here. And, and I guess I, I, I'm really pleased to see um, so many people trying this. Uh, like certainly for everyone who's been involved so far, it's it's a pretty significant day for us that this is this is launching something, and it's launching something that's um, w what makes open source special is you're not launching tech, you're launching a community, um, and. Um, you know, everyone here who's been trying out the, the, the you know, the day zero um, copy of, of, of um, the Firefly command line to get everything stood up, like um, that, that, that makes you there on, 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 on day zero of, of this community. And I'm really excited to see where it goes, how, how, we, how we work together as a group, how we do, as, as Brian was saying, like at the beginning of the day today, that, Blockchains had um, and and multiple systems as a whole has got these great, absolutely fantastic projects. Um, the projects are um, a very specialist and a niche in a particular area, and and this project's trying to trying to sort of be a bridge, be a link between them. And, um, and, and for those technical folks on the call, I hope we've got people from a whole bunch of projects who are thinking, does this fit with my project? What's the, like, what's the relationship? Is this something that would allow us to kind of reach a whole bunch of people who aren't going to be working inside of our box, but suddenly would allow our box to be available to all those, you know, enterprise developers who just want to use this stuff and coordinate it together and build solutions on top of it. Um, and um, really excited to be to, to be just at, at that beginning. And, and we're going to hopefully be working together with, with a real spectrum of contribution coming together and, and leadership from all of these, these communities, um, uh, you know, not least Besu and Fabric, um, who've already been um, really involved over the, the past few weeks as we've been discussing this within the, within the, um, the Hyperledger community. Um, but, but also, um, you know, we've been talking lots to, to Avalon and we've been talking um, uh, lots on the identity side as, uh, as well. So it's going to be really exciting seeing how we can bring this all, all together. Nick, did you have anything to, to close out on this one before we... we... No, we just, um, yeah, I have a few thoughts, I guess. Um, really, really appreciate, you know, the, the broad attendance and for folks, you know, sticking around, even if things get, get a bit bumpy. Um, that's, that's how nascent projects tend to work. But, you know, we're here to get this mature and get this hardened, uh, hopefully with your help. Um, I'll, I'll just reiterate, we, we really, really do want to hear from you, you know, in, in our meetups uh, on Rocket Chat. If, if you have requests for updated documentation or if you're, you know, a good Samaritan and maybe you even want to write some documentation, we're, we're all for that. Um, and, and we really just sort of, you know, want to be sort of co-stewards of this project with the community and, and with everyone. So we're here to help. We're here to build together. And uh, again, you know, we're, we're as accessible as, as could be. So please don't ever be shy if you need to get in touch with us, if you have thoughts, if you have issues, if you have suggestions. Um, our eyes and our ears are wide open. So just thanks thanks to everyone. And we're really excited about, about this project through the rest of 2021 and well beyond.